When your application is in a production environment, unexpected errors can pop up. And when they do, you want to make sure no sensitive information is revealed about the user or to any users. So in this video, I'm going to show you a technique that you can use with your GraphQL servers to mask these errors and make sure you don't leak any data. So right here, I have GraphQL Playground up, and I'm going to show you an example of a bad query or a query that is leaking information. So when I run it here, it throws an error. In the error, you can see I just have a misspelling of the word limit in my SQL statement. Um, but it's also showing me the entire SQL statement right here. Um, and so it, I now know more information than I really want to show to the user. And I want to only like give them a general error message if something unexpected like this happens. So how can I go about doing this? So I'm using Apollo Server. And when you initialize Apollo Server, there's a key called format error that we can use here. And so what format error does is it comes with a error as a parameter. And this is the error that was thrown. And we can get this from GraphQL. It's a GraphQL error. And I'm also using a UUID, which we'll talk about in a second. So what I like to do is I like to generate a UUID every time an error is thrown. And so I just store that in a string. And what I'll do is I'll log the error, and I'll also log the, um, the ID, or this UUID that I create. And then what I just throw back to the user is an internal error. Uh, so what this is going to do is it's going to mask the error. So I'm logging the original error here, and then I'm just throwing back this general internal error, but I also include this error ID. And so what this will do now is if I were to run this, and now my resolver throws an error, uh, but now it's only returned a UUID here. And the reason why I like to use this UUID is now, let's say I have some reporting on the client or the front end, I can use this UUID and I can look at the logs in the back end and match it up. So I can see uh, that you get that same ID in the back end and I can see the error message. So I can be like, all right, the user on the front end tried to do this one thing um, and then it threw that UUID and I can check in the server logs what error was thrown when the user tried to do that. So it's a way to look up the error. Um, and so that's one way you can do to mask the errors and not leak any data to the users. Now, the problem with this technique right now is we're currently doing this for every single error. So whenever an error is thrown in the resolvers, it's going to go through format error. And here we're just returning an internal server error. Now we may want to do only some errors, right? What if we only want to do this for unexpected errors? So to do that, what I like to do is add some if statements at the top. Um, so here I'm using Apollo Server, um, and I'm using the Apollo error from Apollo Server Express, but you can use this from any error message you want. You could create your own error message. So what I do is there's a key on here called original error, and you can check if this original error is of an instance of Apollo error or uh, whatever error you're expecting to throw. And if it is, you just return that error. Uh, and so what will happen now is all errors that are not Apollo errors are unexpected. And so we throw this generic error message. Otherwise, Apollo errors we throw back to the client. Because some errors you do want to throw back and some you don't. So I just check the instance of to do that. And so let's say I have multiple. I want to check Apollo errors. Or I want to check some custom error. Then I'll just add another one here. And I'll be like my error, right? And so you can do that for as many errors as that, that you want to check. And so it's pretty easy, and I recommend adding this to any website or GraphQL server you're using uh, to make sure you're not leaking any information, possibly from unexpected errors that pop up.